Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I want to start where the member of you fought solve ended, Mr. Speaker, on the attitude to politicians that some technocrats have, Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, sometimes you really can't blame them, you know. Because when you listen to a former prime minister speak in public and tell you he's the one who initiated, he's the one who initiated the moratorium and the ECCB for households. He comes and he says to the public, everybody can hear him, Mr. Speaker. When, he, Mr. Speaker, you know, so you really have to understand why some of these technocrats do not listen to us, you know. Because when you have a leader of the opposition come and put on his Facebook page that we borrowed $505 million for this year, when he can, a former Minister of Finance, can print that in the public for the whole world to see. Facebook has billions of viewers, Mr. Speaker. And you have technocrats and saying, if this guy can print that, you think we can give him our money to control? <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, the, the, I, sometimes I also, I also get very nervy with technocrats. I tell them that. I've said this all the time. I have been, we've had some rough discussions on giving me 30 million US dollars. I want me to change the whole world for that. I have, I've had these discussions on that. But it is because of the behavior of people like the leader of the opposition, why Tetrakas behave that way, Mr. Speaker. But we, we have to, to change that. Mr. Speaker, this is the worst global crisis that the world has suffered since the Great Depression. The worst go but the leader of the opposition comes and stands up and gives the impression that St. Lucia is in a little in a little hole. And what what you're doing? You're not doing nothing, Mr. Speaker. He, what you're doing, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, all countries, all countries, Mr. Speaker, all countries. All countries are suffering from inflation. During COVID, Mr. Speaker, there was zero inflation or deflation. That's what that's the economy he managed. Zero inflation or deflation, Mr. Speaker. Right now, the entire world, the entire world is screaming because of inflation. The UK changed two prime ministers in six weeks, Mr. Speaker, because of management of the economy. And you come and you sit down and you sit and you speak about you speak about the UK change two prime ministers because of, because of economic management. The UK change two prime ministers because of economic management. Two prime ministers because of the management of the economy. One of them was uh, supply side, and the other ones and the people said that is not good, and the markets crashed because of. The reduction in taxation for the rich and famous, the market crash. Part of the reason why. And the UK government changed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the entire world, the great United States, the great United States and Congress, the Republicans are, are controlling Congress because the people perceive the management of the economy because the inflation is at its highest it has been for decades. The leader of the opposition comes here and he plays and he pretends, Mr. Speaker, that he must live on, on perception, Mr. Speaker. Glib talk. Absolutely no facts. Glib talk, Mr. Speaker. Flashing mirrors versus the truth, Mr. Speaker. We are in a global crisis, Mr. Speaker. A crisis. And the leader of the, of the opposition wants to make people believe that the government could do more. He said, he told us how to change the supply, the supply side issues. You think a man can stand up in the parliament and tell the world that he taught us, he tried to help us to, to, to improve on the supply side issues? So we're making containers in St. Lucia. 
We own ship in St. Lucia. He tried to help us on the supply side issue. He tried to tell us what to do to improve the supply side problems in the country, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what the leader of the opposition does is whilst he was trying to grow the economy, the people were suffering. And that's the difference between him and us, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, look at the first two years of any Labour Party government. And look at the first two years before COVID of the government that the leader of the opposition was Prime Minister on and tell me the difference. I want him to tell me one achievement of his government before COVID. One. One achievement, one. Just one, one hotel I was built, one hotel. One hotel I was built, Mr. Speaker. One hotel I was built, one hotel I was built. I want him to tell me one, and let's talk about we reduce unemployment. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the range hotel was started. The <laughs> You see, Mr. Speaker, you see now, Mr. Speaker, you understand? I promised myself <laughs> never to respond to him. But you see, I won't apologize to my colleagues and the public for getting up to, to remind him that I beat him. <laughs> but I promise not, and I won't do it again. I'll never do it again. Because, you know, that, that kind of, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the sense, we stopped Sanders Hotel. Last week in the courts, Sanders versus Landings, the court ruled on on that situation. I, I did that. I, I, I run the court now. <laughs> Who's was? Which hotel I stop? Which hotel I stop? And standards building now. And the building now. And the building now. How many build under you? How many rooms you build? How many rooms you build? Where? <laughs> you build them? Build them? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you know, that kind of delusion that caused him to lose the election, you know. And that's why on the night election he fell down. Because that kind of delusion. Because he was saying to people that he'd won 17 seats. He went to a CARICOM meeting, and as usual, he denigrated me. As usual, something he's trying to do here. And he told his colleagues, ah. <laughs> So somebody told him, you have a little issue to deal with an election. He said, no, man, no, no, That's what he does. And he continues to do it, deluding himself with a fear of his surrogates that he is not what he is. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, all the information, he speaks about population, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in 2019, the labor force was 100,976 people. In 2020, the labor force was 95,790 people. So there were less people, so unemployment must go down. You got less people working. Mr. Speaker, you know, this use and abuse of statistics playing that, that, that you smart. Next thing, next post, we have not given people the dollar fifty we promise on petrol tax, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, how could we reduce petrol tax when we were making no money on petrol? How could we reduce what? It was being subsidized already. So reduce what? How could we reduce the petrol tax when the people were collecting no petrol tax? How can we reduce it? But I, I'm going to tell you that if the trajectory of petrol prices remain the same and we are reasonably sure that in the future it will not increase, we will keep our promise to the farmers. That is the government we operate. Mr. Speaker, let me remind the leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, because you know he sits, comes up his accent and talks these kind of things. He talks about tourism arrivals. We had an arrangement for a PPP agreement where the government would have no, absolutely no liability, or we do not, we do not have to come to Parliament for any guarantee. 
he crashed the agreement because he said he was collecting money on tourism arrivals and he comes here and boasts and then laments tourism arrivals when you put the country in debt because you said that tourism arrivals would help back pay the debt you put the country in debt because you said that tourism you didn't have the foresight to know that if there was an unforeseen situation that as there was if COVID nobody knew COVID would come but there, there could have been a hurricane True. you put the country in debt you put the country in debt right now we may have a debt of at least 250 million US dollars at least and I'm going, and I'm going to make a statement again on the, on the airport because you see I've kept very quiet I've allowed them to insult me to come in this eye, Mr. Speaker, but the time will come when I'm going to make two statements, two disclosures. St. Jude and Iwanora. Take your time. Thank you, Minister. St. Jude and Iwanora. Because this bluff about 70% complete, about 70% complete about St. Jude Hospital, a state of the art, St. Jude, the truth of St. Jude will come. But the same way, Mr. Speaker, I waited. I waited of patience. I was elected in the parliament in 1997. Yes. I waited until 2021 to become prime minister. No, no. I went once, I lost, and I won again. And I, and I understood to lead, you must follow. So this is why when I was in the government, I worked hand in hand with Kenny Anthony, who was Prime Minister. That is the difference. That's the difference, Mr. Speaker. And I'm, that's the difference, Mr. Speaker. So let's get back to, to Hiwanura and to Wisdom Arrivals, Mr. Speaker. Let's, let's go there a little bit. Let's go a little bit there. This leader of the opposition, authorize a contract with a contractor to build a building and he had absolutely no end no end figure yeah. Yeah. absolutely no end figure no idea how much it will cost go ahead and build the election coming let me fool them that's what you know that is economic management this, this is the, the economic guru started an airport changed the plans 3,000 pairs when the plan said 716 pairs speaking about a, a thing about home potting home potting that was at its best at its best a hope much as a reality at its best Mr. Speaker then Further, compound it and say that you had a plan to build a cruise terminal in Viewfort, hoping that you can destabilize Viewfort South and Viewfort North, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me tell you the difference between GPH and Carnival. The, the leader of the opposition went to Miami. In a big story. And had a big scene, all kinds of scenes on the on the on the on the um, LED lights, LED thing, he liked LED. All kinds of things. He went and doing that with the speaker. There he said at that signing, oh we're very happy to have carnival ability in St. Lucia. Absolutely nothing after that. Nothing. Nothing after that. GPH. The people came here. Yes. Went to the official residence of the Prime Minister. Signed the MOU. And immediately after that, there's a concessionary agreement which we are going to discuss. Before, when we signed the MOU, SLASPA was involved. The Ministry of Finance was involved. All the relevant people in the tourism industry were involved before we signed the MOU. 
and now the concessionary agreement is in the public. The Ministry of Finance technicals have it. Slasma has it. Everybody has it. We're going to discuss it. And when we discuss it, we're going to bring it to the public. But what do you, what does the leader put on his Facebook page? We sell the pot. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you know, I sat here, I sit here, and I said to myself, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the business says that we do nothing, we have done nothing for people. Yes. Page 64 of the budget address that I read. And the next budget address, we are going to be comparing achievements and reality, subsidizing cooking gas. Our subsidy for cooking gas is the highest ever in his time. The subsidy for cooking gas used to be at its highest, $10. <clears throat> now, the subsidy for cooking gas is between $18 and $20 the time it reached $25 million people. What have we done to relieve people? Increase annual personal tax allowance. For some other piece, increase annual personal tax allowance from eighteen thousand to twenty-five thousand dollars. Ten thousand, Mr. Speaker. You know what all that means? That means that from January, more than ten thousand people in the country will pay less tax. Cautioning consumers from the full impact of rising food prices. You know what I did, that, what, 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 what you did, Mr. Speaker? We removed the 6.5% service charge on commodities that must be bought. And up to this day, we subsidized flour and sugar. You never had to subsidize flour and sugar. Never. Never. We subsidized up to date a bag of flour should cost a hundred and something dollars. We subsidize it by between 50 and 60 dollars every bag of flour for the further for the solution. That's what we do, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what have we done to cushion the impact? We've waived interest and penalty charges on personal and company tax for everybody, and we've written off all company tax due before the year 2000. That's what we've done. That's what we've done to grow the economy. What have we done to grow the economy, Mr. Speaker? In a little while, we're going to borrow directly $10 million to grant and soft loans for micro and small business, Mr. Speaker. What have we done to grow the economy? We've created the, co the, we've created the community tourism pro project where very soon next month we are going to we are going to be giving grants and loans for people to get involved in indigenous tourism ventures continuing the nature heritage tourism project that I started when I was Minister of Tourism what have we done for people what have we done we've funded created the creative industries to give people a sense of pride in the country, a sense of being sent Russian, Mr. Speaker. How have we funded it? We've done emancipation day activities. The first time a government has got involved in emancipation because we're not afraid of our history. Yes. Our patrimony is not our credit card. Yes. Our patrimony is our history and colonialism has no conscience. That's what we do. That's a difference. That's a difference, Mr. Speaker. That's a difference. That's a difference, Mr. Speaker. That's what we've done. What have we done, Mr. Speaker? We've waived import duty of ten thousand dollars for public servants to give them a little ease, Mr. Speaker. What have we done, Mr. Speaker? We have provided a five hundred dollar one-off payment to pensioners, and in conjunction with the NIC, we've raised all its pensions by about. 4% in the first instance. That's what we've done, Mr. Speaker. What have we done, Mr. Speaker? What have we done? We've paid the civil servants their, 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 their increase, and we're going to pay them their back pay in December. That's what we've done. What have we done, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, during this period, the price of rice and flour, flour has increased by over 30%. 
white sugar by over 75 percent rice over 15 percent but because we've subsidized it we've kept the prices at the for the rich other popular and richer. so but what have we done mr speaker what have we done mr speaker i want the public to compare my first 18 months as prime minister with his first 18 months I never want to go into a business of comparison, but if you open the door, I'll go in. Compare my 18 months. Compare the promises of my first budget with your first budget and what you did in your 18 months. Mr. Speaker, let's talk about growing the economy. Growing the economy, Mr. Speaker, you who came into government and you found the Grosile Highway. And every day I feel sorry for my colleague from, from, from Grosile because people complain to get from Castries to Grosile. It's about 40 minutes, 50 minutes, Mr. Speaker, because you and your friend refused to go ahead with a loan that was negotiated for the Cassidy's Grosley Highway because you could not have your way with the contractors. And, and you know what you did? You spent $21 million on less than half a mile of road instead of spending the money to, con to continue the highway. That's what you did. But the story of that has not been said. Mr. Speaker, you, and you speak about progress and being an economic manager and doing this and doing that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this leader of the opposition in the government that he said that he'll run so well did not attract one investment before COVID. In fact, he found the Range Hotel. We came here and we warned him, do not interfere with the Range Hotel arrangement. He interfered because he's smart and bright. He interfered, Mr. Speaker, and we lost the Range Hotel and we had to pay back Range for, for the hotel. And the Range Hotel went to Dominica, they built a hotel there, and they built another one soon, and one in Antigua. Where is the one in St. Lucia? Mr. Speaker, you see, if the leader of the opposition had come in his honorable house and speak about the loan and make some sort of suggestions how it can be improved, then he can help himself. Feeling under pressure in his party, so he can help himself. So when he comes, he comes and he, he tries to ridicule, ridicule me. We had our convention peaceful and well, and I want to thank the delegates 250 to zero. Mr. Speaker, let us go further in the leader of, of, of the opposition talking about managing the economy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition speaks about flooding in Corinth and flooding in Bexon. Mr. Speaker, do you know? Do you know, Mr. Speaker, that when he came into government, he found a study financed by the CDB where some Canadian engineers had a complete plan for the Bexon mitigation and for the Bexon adaptation to flooding. A complete plan. We invited the parliamentary rep at the time to come <coughs> we invited <coughs> the parliamentary rep at the time to come to a meeting to discuss with the consultants the plan to avoid the to avoid I didn't say stop don't get me wrong I never said that we would stop it I said to try to avoid it to avoid the flooding in Bexar. There was an entire plan. The parliamentary rep came to the meeting. He asked all the questions that he wanted to ask. We lost the election. And we never blamed St. Lucians for voting us out. 
We never blame solutions. We accepted the will of the people. They voted us out. We accepted the will. You know, when they came to the government, they scrapped that entire plan. And they said the solution to the problem is desilting. They scrapped the entire plan. They didn't even look at it. And they said, the, and talk about managing a government, managing an economy. The answer to the Silton, they spend millions of dollars in the Silton back so We are going to say, who owned the, the tractors? I don't know who owned the tractors. Mr. Speaker, that is the distilting history of the leader of the opposition the government. That's his history. That's his history in distilting. I want to I want him to tell the public whether he didn't find a complete plan to help the flooding in Bexo, hoping to alleviate it. And you know what they did? They went and they put to fool people, they put they tried to put a health center in a floodplain. Mr. Speaker, that is the reality. And you know, Mr. Speaker, he hasn't learned. You know, he still threatens journalists. He still threatens journalists. He still calls journalists on the phone and threatens them. He still does that. He still calls journalists on the telephone and threatens them. Tell them the girls are off and now it's time. He still does it. And you want to tell me the people of St. Lucia haven't understood that? After you threatened so many journalists, you tell them you are ashamed of them, you tell them they are all kinds of things, you lost election, you still threaten them? And say that's not true. It's true you threaten them. <laughs> Of course, he threatened the journalists. And, and, and if you see, and when you see the time will come, I'll pay the tape. Of course, he threatened the journalists. He threatened them because he said, let, let me tell you something. This little job is something else. He wrote the police, saying to the police, that he's having a thousand people in a match. He wrote a letter. <laughs> if I don't have it here, I'll come up and get the Mr. Speaker. I'll make, I'll make it up, up, up to go down. He wrote the police, telling them to give him permission for a thousand people in a match. That's what he did. When he did not get a thousand people, Homilgil Francis, Homilgil Francis, father was a police like me. I'll get a letter, I'm right here. Homilgil said to the press that he was not happy with the crowd. He got so annoyed. You don't know what he, what he called Homil? What his name? <laughs> Now, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Well, Miguel Francis. He got so annoyed he did that. And he threatened the journalists. Telling the journalists, oh, you're not, you're not printing, you're not printing what I say. We talked about a, a match, so many things. You never talk about my press release. You never talk about, we talked about this and that. And the girls are off. The girls are off. And he went further. And he tried to get journalists fired by calling, calling the journalist boss. Wow. That's what you do. No journalist, there's not one journalist in this country can say Philip J.P. ever threatened them. They write whatever they want about me. Talk shows, say whatever they want about me. I respect their right to disagree and I respect the freedom of expression. Mr. Speaker, this leader of the opposition, who comes and talks about borrowing. Mr. Speaker, in 2016, when we lost the election, the Minister for Finance, the former Minister of Finance, sat here and he said that we are going to support borrowing on free, on the free conditions. One, 
if the if the debt was incurred before, like if we spoken about a project and I had to borrow for it. Two, if it was to help people, and three, if it was a necessary capital expenditure. That's what we said. When we came into opposition, we never questioned the government's right to borrow. What we questioned is what they were borrowing for. That's what we questioned. You cannot tell me you borrowed, you borrowed 32 million dollars to pay Lockerbie. 32 million dollars. And what is the result of that? You improve, you put tough. And I've never gone into that into that argument because I like my arguments to be solid, based in the science. What you did is you put tough on three grounds: Sufre, Miku, and Denry. And you spend thirty-two million dollars to improve playing fields. Thirty-two million dollars. What did you do? You borrowed for payment due. You paid them thirteen million US dollars to tell you what these technocrats can tell you all the time. But because you don't have the confidence in our local technocrats, because you don't have the confidence in our local expertise, you need somebody to come from abroad to tell you thirteen million dollars to tell you what our technocrats say all the time. Thirty million dollars US. That's what you borrowed for. You know what you borrowed for, Mr. Speaker? Yeah. And, and you're speaking about borrowing. And you know, today the minister of housing is correct. And we're not going to go into the, we're not going to go into what they call the anatomy of borrowing. No. But we're going to go into it because, Mr. Speaker, and I hope the minister, the member for Shuazel, listens to what I say. But I don't want to go down that track because up to now he still has a level of believability. <laughs> He still has a level of, of believability, Mr. Speaker. So if he goes on that track, he will lose all that believability. Because I tell you something, you know, anything, anything that the leader of the of the opposition says, in there, there is something that's not true. He just cannot help himself. Why, in the good name? You could put on a Facebook page that the government borrowed 109 million dollars in October. October was last month. <laughs> Anybody can tell you that we didn't borrow no money in October, but you print it for the Facebook people to listen to, and you want you want to argue that and try to attack me. You want to argue that that. Mr. Speaker, the guy's hungry. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you that we'll have enough time. We'll have a lot of time, Mr. Speaker, to discuss. We'll have a lot of time to discuss borrowing. We'll have a lot of time, Mr. Speaker. We have a lot of time. All the resolutions that we get the Parliament to borrow, we'll be able to discuss it. We'll be able to discuss what we borrowed for. Why we borrowed, Mr. Speaker, and what we promised as far as borrowing is concerned. But today, the borrowing is unique. The borrowing is for people. Frontally, for people. Vulnerable people. The single mothers that he attacks. Yes. The people that he calls medicans. Yes. The people that he says go and demonstrate in Marsha. Yes. These are the people we're borrowing for. The people that he said that I want St. Jude to look like Marsha. Them people in Marsha. Then I great in Marsha. That's what we do. That's the people we're borrowing for. And whilst we are doing that, we are creating an environment where the businesses can make more money, both large and small, and helping small businesses to make money. That's the difference between us and them, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to... Before I leave, I want to just say something quickly about Liat. You know, Mrs. Beagle? <laughs> the minister member for Mikusov, 
talks about crashing airlines. You know he has employed if two airlines that crash? He was involved in two airlines that went under. Air Jamaica and Air Jamaica went under. And what's the name of the thing? Caribbean? EC Express went under too. Air Jamaica and EC Express. He was involved in EC Express. But right now, he knows all the answers to Liat. But he couldn't run EC Express. You know, Mr. Speaker, sometimes when you hear this guy speak, and you hear people say, Oh, he's the best, this and that, this and that. You have to look at the reality with the reality. He, EC Express was being managed by the leader of the opposition. It crashed. But you know what he blames? He blames, he says, oh, they, oh, there are seven um, regulatory bodies. Did, but why did EC Express crash? React. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition has been persistently and consistently attacking and denigrating Liat. Because his idea for Liat was you should have a certain kind of plane that he alone know about. Talks about compared. Mr. Speaker, listen. Mr. Speaker, you know, you must want to listen to these things, you know. The leader of the compares Belize to a craft with Liat. You don't know what's Liat's fundamental problem, Mr. Speaker? It, it has all this hop and drop. Hop and drop. High maintenance costs for this hop and drop. 40 minutes to St. Lucia. 40 minutes to, to St. Vincent. 30 minutes to, to Martinique. One hour to Antigua. But Belize is a vast country. Belize hasn't got this drop and drop and like like Liat, how you can you can you can compare an airline that services a vast country like Belize with a little hop, an airline that that deals with 40 minutes between each other? That's a difference. High maintenance cost for this figure. But you know why? The leader of the opposition does not like anything West Indian. He refuses to pay the University of the West Indies. We owe the University of the West Indies. $20 million plus and climbing, Mr. Speaker. He believes that the community college, the community college at the moment is a waste of time. And he's on record as saying that. All what I say, I can prove it. All I say, I can prove it, Mr. Speaker. So what I'm doing there is not a personal attack. The personal attack is when they attack me. My attacks are based on verifiable facts. I want any of the surrogates to say anything I said today is not true. Anything I said in honorable house music is not true. Mr. Speaker, the deficits, the deficits on the us, on the left party, on the Kenny Anthony, Mr. Speaker, 2.8% 2014-15, 2.4% When it took the government in 2016, the deficit was 1.3%. 1.3% the deficit, Mr. Speaker. That's, that's what he inherited. And what did he bring it? Wasteful expenditure, travel, pejoral letter. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to I want to applaud the minister for his single-mindedness as far as this, his passion, Mr. Speaker. Sometimes we need to speak to him. He needs some, he needs to get some counseling when it comes to some things that he does, Mr. Speaker. But I want to congratulate him. I want to say I'm very happy for... I'm very happy for the workers of Majestic Industries. And you know, it's not a promise again, it's reality. Not a promise, it's a reality. They'll get the money. And we, and yes, we, we didn't sell any building to get, a reality, to get the money. And the, the reality is what the leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, I, want, I know you want to go, you know. But this thing is so, this thing, it, it irks me, Mr. Speaker. It irks me. Because you know, when I hear these lies, Mr. Speaker, sorry, you tell me, you tell me I must use lies. <laughs> When I hear these untruths, Mr. Speaker, 
I have to, because Mr. Speaker, the records, I have the records. The records are available, Mr. Speaker. Let, let, let me give you a letter. You want to make it a, 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 a document of the House, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, July 16th, 2020. Now you know what's Prime Minister, you remember, right? Compensation for workers employed with majestic industries. <clears throat> Further to a meeting, I read it, I read it. You will agree, I read it. Let's hold, hold, let's hold a little bit for your lunch, I it. <coughs> Further to a meeting held on December 5th, 2020. Further to a meeting held on December 5th, 2019. Eh? 2019. <coughs> a delegation from the National Workers Union, including John Haywood, Secretary General, Solis Myers, Deputy President General, Lawrence Poyot, Senior Industrial Edition Specialist, a former shop steward from Majestic Industries Limited, the undersigned and yourself and Minister Guy Joseph. A general meeting for the former employees of Majestic Industries was held on Thursday, July 16, 2020 at the National Workers Union at Unity House, San Susi. Over 100 former employees attended that meeting. <coughs> the leadership of the NWU gave a detailed explanation on the discussions at our previous meeting. As a result, the workers present voted in favor of the following. The land at Villebutel belonging to the company should be sold. <laughs> Proceeds from the sale should be used to compensate the workers. 150 of the former employees are prepared to accept $10,000 each as an exgracia payment in lieu of severance, notice of vacation entitlements to be closure to this matter. We do hope that you'll be willing to give us an opportunity to, to meet with you to find a final settlement on this long outstanding matter. You understand? That was the letter that was written, Mrs. Speaker. When we came into government, I met the same union and I said, these people have suffered enough. Yeah. So we're not waiting for no building to sell. We're not waiting for anything of this nature. We are going to pay the workers according to a list that you prepared. That's right. We're going to form a special purpose vehicle, put the bonds in there, and the union graciously, and I thank them for that, they graciously accepted the bonds. We're going to put the bonds in a special purpose vehicle and you will handle it and pay your workers because we have confidence. And Mr. Speaker, that was endorsed by cabinet tomorrow, yesterday. Same for the Liat workers. That is the truth, Mr. Speaker, and we are Mr. Speaker. I thank you.